full-blown COVID started to hit, it was as bad as advertised. Just the, the moral injury of having patient after patient die where ordinarily you can save people and just we had nothing and just pronouncing death after death after death. And the, it, was, it was just a complete horror show. Morally, it's demoralizing, terrifying, and it really takes a toll on you. Um, I ended up having to take a brief leave for about a couple of weeks. It was weighing on me and it was affecting me. And then when I came back, it was interesting. I came back to work and the whole thing changed. Everything was different. And what had happened during that time that I was gone is that our uh, head pulmonologist and critical care intensivist, he had come across the uh, Society of Critical Care Medicine correspondence about the work that uh, Umberto Maduri did where he uncovered that corticosteroids were likely saving lives. And, and so they gave it a try and implemented it at my hospital. It was very obvious that this was stabilizing the disease and it was stabilizing our institution. And I sent it out to as many people as I could. Why aren't we hearing anything about corticosteroids? The National Institutes of Health recommend against, the CDC recommended against, World Health Organization, everybody was lining up steroids are recommended against and it was like a, a hair pulling out moment because it just made no sense and really it wasn't until after the recovery trial was published which oh what do you know after you know a 6,000 subject study from oxford university look at that corticosteroids are life-saving in the hospital for covid and so moving forward to what happened with eye mask plus and ivermectin it's like deja vu all over again someone sent me a link to eye mask plus and i said what the hell what is this and so I click on and I'm looking and I saw ivermectin and I, you know, I remember thinking to myself, yeah, ivermectin kind of, we lost track of it. Like we remember we saw that Monash study and a couple trials came out and then it just kind of went away. And, and then I saw the name Pierre Corey and I said, wait, wait a second, Paul Merrick, oh, FLCCC, I know these guys. And so I did more of the research and I delved into it and I looked at the papers and I, I looked at whatever was publicly available at the time and I said to myself, well, based on the evidence I see, it is a lot more likely than not that this drug is effective clinically. When you see repeated different investigators in different countries who have nothing to do with one another reproducing a similar result, you cannot ignore it. Right? You can't. You just simply can't. You have to look into it and heavily consider it. Dr. Corey went on to testify and gave that earth shattering testimony in front of the Senate, which became obviously a big matter of controversy in what has happened since is now the NIH has reversed their recommendation against it. We know that Oxford University is now going to do a large clinical trial. Obviously, each individual trial for ivermectin is limited in multiple ways, but the magnitudes of effect we're seeing aren't tiny, right? They're not like 10% reductions in mortality. They're like 80, right? They've had entire families, people that were in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, who all got COVID and I prescribed the family ivermectin and no one ended up in the hospital. Um, I treated a woman in her 80s who got it, who made a complete recovery in a matter of 24, 48 hours, went on to feel fine. In the hospital, I've actually picked up chatter from some of the medical residents actually that say they've noticed particularly that the hospital as patients with COVID really seem to be doing well. And that, I mean, I got my group to buy into this now, I think in like December. And so we incorporated it before the modified Math Plus came out, before there was like a, any protocol. We started doing ivermectin on all of our COVID patients. I mean, I've had people severely comorbid. And you, as a clinician that's been treating COVID for months, you know when you see somebody and they're about to go downhill, you see the inflammatory markers rise, the D-dimers rise, chest x-rays get worse, the oxygen requirements start to go up. and I've had patients like that who 72 hours later were breathing room air.